I was 26 when I first started on the biomedical treatments. Um, up until that stage, I was told that I was crazy and that I needed to do all these things and work on my mental problems when really it was my physical problems that was the issue. And so once I treated my physical problems, you know, life just improved out of sight. My mum had four children and I was the last four, so um, she, she knew that something was not right from the very start. By the time I was two, she'd started taking me to all these child psychologists and, and the initial assessment, I was given an IQ test and some sort of behavioural assessment and I was actually um, assessed as being mentally retarded. So she said, this is not good enough, I need another assessment. And she went to a lady who actually told her afterwards, as soon as she saw me, that she, from the get-go, suspected it was autism. They did a lot of occupational therapy with me, a lot of speech therapy, things like that. And I, th I think that got me to a certain level where I could function in society. So I knew enough to get by. Once, once I figured out that language was actually used for communication rather than to make just pretty noises, that, that certainly helped. By the time I was 12, 13 years old, I was in a very bad state mentally and because at that age the demands of social life just accelerate rapidly, I just couldn't cope and I just got very depressed and yeah, very sort of, very, very depressed. So I actually ended up in um, a, a mental um, hospital at one stage for teenage children because I was so, so ill by this stage and I, I just couldn't cope. I couldn't cope. And everyone else is up here in terms of their social skills and I was all the way down here and I was never going to be able to catch up. I felt that there was very little that could be done, so all I could do was to watch other people and to observe other people and try and learn from them. So, so I learned enough to be able to get by and to function relatively well. Um, you know, I, I managed to graduate from high school and then university and lived relatively normal life, but I, I always found communication and interacting with other people enormously difficult. Even though I didn't show it, it was always a massive strain. I don't think people ever understood what a massive strain on me it was to go out every single day and try and to pretend like you can live like everyone else. And you know you can't. And it's, I don't think people understand what a massive strain that is on an autistic person. I couldn't get out of bed on quite a few days a week. Um, even walking short distances was enormously difficult, so I, I felt quite ill by this stage. I had seen a conventional doctor who had told me that, again, all my problems were, were mental and that I needed to take antidepressants and so you, you trust a doctor and so I, even though I thought this can't be right, I'm not depressed. I went on these antidepressants because I was told it would help and it didn't, it made things worse. My stomach problems throughout my 20s had just been getting worse and worse and worse. Um, so until the stage where it was intolerable and I, was, and I just worked out that whenever I ate anything that was at all wheat based, I'd get, it, my stomach was just, you know, horrible after that. <laughs> 
I had also worked out because my stomach problems had gotten better initially, but they never went away. And in fact, they even got a little bit worse eventually. And I worked out then that it was the milk that I was always eating that seemed to be the problem. So I cut that out and and that certainly helped my stomach a lot, but it still didn't help with my fatigue and I was still very tired all the time. So once, um, you know, many months later, I found my um, doctor. (laughs) I was, my first appointment, I was in the doctor's surgery for hours because there were just so many things that she needed to unravel. And it was great that I at least had the foundation that I was already off gluten and casein. Um, So that was a good starting point. And so she was able to work with that and look at my um, individual biochemistry and figure out all the things that I needed personally addressing. So for me, obviously with all my stomach problems, probiotics and prebiotics were very important. I'm still on, in fact, a a very... (laughs) heavy duty vitamin C supplement every single day and fish oil is amazingly important for my brain function. I did everything that my doctor recommended and within a week it was amazing, amazing the difference. I couldn't believe it myself. I'd been hoping that it might make a difference and that over many months I might feel better but after a week I had amazing um, increase in my energy levels and also my stomach felt much better. I've had enormous stomach problems my whole life. I thought it was completely normal to alternate between diarrhea and constipation. All of a sudden my glands stopped hurting constantly. My kidneys had always, you know, I was having constant problems with them being sore and that started to get better as well. I've never been able to tolerate hair bands, um, even a ponytail I used to distract me enormously. One of my favourite things to do now is to put on a headband because I feel very glamorous and I'm very impressed that I can actually do it. <laughs> also with um, my um, food, I've always been enormously picky eater. You can all ask my mother. <laughs> you know. All of a sudden I would accept all these foods that I never would have dreamt of eating in a million years beforehand. I've been trying to train myself to eat grapes for years and then I found that I could just eat them. I would find in conversation with people that I could just naturally follow what was going on and if people changed from one person talking to the other, I. I could actually get all the conversation that each person had said instead of little bits here and there. So I was almost getting back to normal and this was amazing. <laughs> I People tell you it's not possible and it's certainly possible. <laughs> it was enormous relief to to hear that, you know, the problems that I had might actually be physical problems. Basically, the attitude back then in the 1980s was you're going to have this hopelessly disabled child for the rest of your life. Um, You know, learn to live with it. This is the way it's going to be. There's nothing you can do. Um, And it's wrong. So, you know, I'm, I'm 28. I've got a good job. I've got a fiance. We're going to get married. My health problems have disappeared. Um, I can talk to people and, you know, listen to what they're saying and just interact with them on the same level. And even two years ago, this would have been something that I would have never dreamed could have happened.